Hey guys, welcome once again to the Guy Vlog Podcast. As always, your host Orlando. And today we got a very simple subject. We're moving away from wrestling. For today, we're going to be talking MMA and the UFC. What is going on with the UFC? Simple as that. What the hell is going on with the UFC? I just don't get it. I mean... Dana White, for me, it's ever since the UFC got sold or got bought, whatever, ever since Dana White received his 400 plus million, he doesn't care. And I'm not saying that he doesn't care about MMA. I believe he cares about the, he cares about his job, but as far as, as the UFC, before I saw him focused on growing a company, on growing the sport, on growing the fan base, on, you know, taking it to another level. But now that the company, you know, achieved his original goal of getting bought out um, and Dana White it has more millions than he knows what to do with, at least for now. We're seeing completely different situation where Dana White is only focused on making big fights. Now, I know what a lot of you guys and gals might be thinking. You, y'all might be thinking, well, isn't that his job? His job is to put on big fights. Well, Dana White is a promoter, but he's a promoter for the UFC. So Dana White's job is basically to make great fight cards for the UFC meaning he's not Don King he's not one of these um, you know he's not Floyd Mayweather he's not making individual fights he's not making one-off pay-per-views no he's building a brand he's building an entire company and he should that should still be his goal I mean that's what they're paying him for to continue to grow it even bigger than it was but now he's got that Conor McGregor bug where he only wants to make super fights. He'll give an interim title to anybody in any situation as long as that will help make the next fight a title fight or a champion versus champion fight. I mean, that's okay to a point, but it's actually more hurtful than helpful for the UFC because it does exactly what Dana said that was wrong with boxing, which is it's unorganized. There are way too many titles. Anybody can have a title at any given time, no matter their record, no matter their ranking, and they can do whatever they want, wherever they want, as long as, you know, Dana White wants to do it. And the new owner should be looking at this and be a little worried because Dana is playing a little bit loose with how he's working everything. Something more important to consider is when the Fertitas were in, Dana wasn't alone. Dana did not have 100% control. And I'm saying when the Fertitas were in, the Fertitas had a say and a strong say in what happened. So when Dana got into one of his little arguments with a fighter or with a champion you at least had the Fertitas there to kind of bring him back and vice versa meaning if he's getting too close to the ledge and looks like he's about to jump off to tell somebody to f off and whatever we don't need you they would bring him back to the reality of we need everybody we need to make sure that the sport is looking legitimate because it is legitimate. We want that's that's their goal. Now, Dana White is on his own. The new owners don't know a tenth of what he knows about the business, and they seem to be letting him run amok and do what he wants. What's the problem with that? The problem with that is that we get the situation that we're seeing with Mighty Mouse, Demetrius Johnson, who by any standards, no matter how you grade your list of greatest fighters ever, 
and greatest active fighters has got to be minimum top three pound for pound fighters in the world compared to anybody john jones hasn't fought in who knows how long conor mcgregor is very inactive if you were to look at how he finishes how he fights he never gets hurt he never makes excuses and i mean come on well-rounded and still seems to get better with every fight this guy has defended his title 10 times in a row he's tied with anderson silva he's ready to break the record and dana white is playing games with him dana white is threatening him with closing his division because he won't fight who dana white wants him to fight and that is all kinds of messed up that is all kinds of wrong because not only will is the issue that he won't fight because you might say hey but he's a champion he should fight anybody yes but the ufc asked him to fight somebody he asked for a different fight they said no to his fight according to him and he eventually agreed to the fight they wanted which was versus ray borg so they finally do that fight they sign both fighters they're ready to go T.J. Dillashaw versus Cody Garbrandt falls apart. And T.J., who I'm sorry, respect as a fighter, but the hypocrisy is thick in his actions, comes down to the division, to the 125, says, well, hasn't come down actually, but says that he wants to come down so that he can fight for Demetrius's title. Because he can't fight Garbrandt. This is the same TJ who was, I'm sorry, but he was bitching. He was moaning about how he is not getting an automatic rematch. About how other people are getting jumped ahead of him. About how unfair it is that it doesn't respect the rankings. That how is he not number one? How can this be done to him? That they're forcing him to fight other people. This man that complained about this situation then goes and at the first opportunity he gets creates the exact situation he complained about for another fighter and another division. That is hypocrisy. And I'm not saying that he created it in the sense of like he put it out there and that's cool. It's his right. The ones to shut it down should be the UFC. They didn't. So he's going with it. But once... Mighty Mouse came out and said his truth about how this situation came about, how he never agreed to fight TJ, how TJ has never made 125, and that he wanted TJ to make 125 once before fighting him. At no time did he say, you know, I'm disrespecting the rankings, I apologize. I can make 125, I'll give him my money, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do the third. None of that. All he has said is that silence. TJ Dillashaw has disappeared. Now, is he a snake in the grass? I don't know, but he got quiet quick. And that's all I'll say about that. Because I do not hate the guy. I don't feel... If he feels it's disrespectful, I feel it's disrespectful that he has maintained this silence with this situation instead of being a man and speaking up and giving his real thoughts. Because Mighty Mouse is not running from him. Mighty Mouse is putting a, a clear condition. And as a champion, the most decorated champion that's had 10 title defenses in a row, a feat that only one other person has achieved, in the UFC and all he is asking is respect my division respect the rankings or pay me he didn't even make it that bad he at least gave the UFC an out he says no I don't want to fight this person not only not because of who he is because he's not of my division he's never made weight and if fight night comes and he doesn't make weight, then it's not a title fight. And 
I lose the opportunity for title defenses in a row. On top of that, the UFC comes back at them, and instead of saying we'll give you the money, they're like, oh no, Ray Borg will still be on the card as a backup. Demetrius Johnson is right to be upset that that's how they're thinking. Because if you're building a brand, which is Dana White's job, you don't do that with title fights. Now, has it been done before? Yes. In emergencies? Yes. And the fighters that have taken that, the champions that have taken that, they're perfectly fine with doing it. Nothing against them. I'm glad as a fan that I get to see it. But let's be real. If they say no to a last minute change, they have that right. Because you're training for one person. And if they switch them out, you have to switch everything last minute. That's a problem. You know, this isn't like when John Jones was offered, you know, Chael Sonnen or whoever, you know, not last minute, but pretty late. No, no. They're talking to him like, wait till the day of. And if TJ doesn't make wait the day before, 24 hours before your fight, we will give you a new fighter. That's ridiculous. If he wants to do it, that's fine. If he doesn't want to do it, it should be equally as fine. Because there is no amount of money in the world that will get him his record back if he loses because he didn't prepare properly because they changed the opponents on him. It's very disrespectful by the UFC to do this to him. And it's very disrespectful to us, the fans. I would love to see a TJ TJ fight. I would. But I do understand what he says. And he's giving the UFC an out because he's saying, pay me. If you want for me to take these kinds of risks, pay me. And pay me his money too if he doesn't make weight, which you're saying is guaranteed. And the UFC, and the UFC who said it's guaranteed, he will make weight no matter what. Instead of saying, well, of course, fine, we'll pay you all the money if he doesn't make weight, but he's going to make weight, so it doesn't matter. Nope. What did they say? No, 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 we'll have Ray Borg as a backup, so that won't even be the case. You'll still fight. That's ridiculous. That's, that's very unprofessional, very unbecoming of an organization that's trying to become number one in the world and establish this sport as a sport that is on the level of the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, boxing and its history. If you're trying to make this sport be at that level, try to tell a boxer the day before his fight that you're switching his opponents. Tell that to Mayweather. You know that wouldn't fly. Tell that to Conor McGregor and yo, yeah, he fights anybody. That was before. I really doubt he'd do it now. And he might, he might not. That's his prerogative, but that's how he lost. And it's just, I just can't believe that a golden opportunity for the UFC to crown a new historic event with the new company happening on their watch. And Dana White is kind of being a dick about it, which everybody knows. It's not surprising because we've heard stories like this from Dana White. And I respect the guy for everything he's done. I even respect him for when he is a dick. But there has to be a filter. There has to be a line. And without the Fertitas there, I don't think there's anybody there to tell him what that line is. I don't know what you guys and gals think. I don't know what you think about this, send me a message, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Orlando at the guy blog.com, wherever you want. But I just find it unbelievable that he can't seem to work with Demetrius Johnson, one of the nicest guys in the business, one of the guys that has never given him any issues. He's never had these type of problems with, with DJ. And now all of a sudden, he, he wants favors for TJ apparently, but more importantly, he can't work with this champion. This ch is the champion. Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson is the champion that, that Dana White 
can't work with to the point where he says, I'll just shut down the division. That is crazy. So, new owners, you better start paying attention because Dana White needs somebody to tell him when to stop. Because if not, he will be a bull in a china shop. He will wreck everything in trying to do what's best for business. But you got to remember, Dana White is going to believe that what's best for business is always going to be whatever he wants. Every once in a while, somebody's got to be there to tell him, no, we're doing this even if you don't like it. So I don't know what to say except that this is very disappointing. I hope it gets worked out. I hope Mighty Moss gets his money. And honestly, if he fights TJ, I hope he wins. Um, TJ coming down like this when the fight is going to be basically in the same time frame that he would have fought Garbrandt anyway after the injury. Um, I don't know. Talk to TJ about it. Let's look to see what interviews come out if he ever decides to actually say something about this situation. Because this is just sad. As always, this is Orlando. Message me. Let me know what you think. Take care, guys. Thank you.